Hey guys, this is Nick with Phone Arena and the smartphone that we are reviewing today is the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8. That's a fitting name, isn't it? The smartphone comes with a 5.8 inch LCD display and that also happens to be its standout feature. However, it isn't a high-end device, it's more of a mid-ranger because the resolution of the display is rather low and the smartphone comes with just a dual-core processor. Besides, you only get about 8GB of onboard storage, which isn't a whole lot. But overall, is the Galaxy Mega 5.8 worth your time? Well, that's what we're here to find out. It goes without saying that the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 feels gigantic in the hands, which is no surprise since it's one of the biggest smartphones in existence. It is very difficult to operate with a single hand and it will barely fit in even the largest of pockets. However, being big is the main selling point of the device after all. With the Galaxy Mega, Samsung is catering to the needs of people who want to experience what it is to have a screen so large on a smartphone without having to pay an astronomical price for buying one. Not that the Galaxy Mega will be cheap, but it will be more affordable than those 5-inch high-end devices that are already on the market. With its design, the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 reminds us a lot of the Samsung Galaxy S4 flagship. In fact, it looks a lot like a bigger Galaxy S4 and it even has the same pattern on the plastic back cover. However, it doesn't quite give us the same premium feel that we get uh, from handling the flagship of the company. Maybe it's because the plastic back flexes inwards when slightly pressed and maybe it's because the bezel surrounding the display could have been thinner than this. Either way, the Galaxy Mega 5.8 doesn't really stand out much with its design. It doesn't feel cheap, but it doesn't feel premium either. We have the typical for Samsung arrangement of buttons on the Galaxy Mega 5.8. Underneath the screen we have a physical home key in the middle and next to it we have the menu and the back keys which are of the capacitive kind. On the left side of the device we have a volume rocker and on the right side we have the lock key. Unfortunately pressing any of these buttons is anything but convenient. That means you will often have to press the buttons with your other hand as otherwise they are a bit hard to reach. 540 by 960 pixels of resolution looks pretty bad when spread across a screen that is 5.8 inches in diagonal. Of course, the display is pretty much usable, but it doesn't look good. The level of details is very low in graphics and fine text is difficult to read. The screen exhibits nice and punchy colors, but there's some uh, motion blur going on, very noticeable when there are moving objects on the display. That isn't too annoying, but uh, it's a flaw nonetheless, so we have to mention it. In terms of outdoor visibility, the screen is usable as long as the brightness is set up to the maximum. Um, it's not flawless, of course, but you will be able to read text and see who's calling. The viewing angles of the screen are okay. Um, not bad, but nothing spectacular either. We have Android 4.2.2 running on the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 which is actually the most recent version of Android available right now. On top of it, we have Samsung's TouchWiz user interface in its latest form, which brings a whole ton of minor improvements, but its major tweaks are what users will truly appreciate. One of them is SmartStay, which prevents the display from turning itself off as long as the user is still looking at it. Another one is called Blocking Mode, which uh, basically disables a number of notifications, including incoming calls, uh, at a specified time, for example at night or when the user is at work. Here we have the multi-window mode which lets you use several applications opened in their own window at the same time. For example here we have the gallery where our photos are and a web browser displaying an article. This feature is very useful on display so big but it does take a toll on the device's performance with some applications so it's up to the user to decide whether they will be using the feature often or not. To make the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 at least somewhat less difficult to operate with a single hand, its maker has added an option to have the keypad and the on-screen keyboard positioned on the left or right side of the screen. But even with these enabled, single-handed use of the device is still very uncomfortable. On the other hand, using the on-screen virtual keyboard with two hands is very convenient because the keys are well spaced apart from each other. There is a dual SIM version of the Galaxy Mega 5.8 and it's called the Mega 5.8 Duos. Its SIM cards work in an always-on manner, meaning that even when one of them is in use during a phone call, 
The other one will still register an incoming call and that is something that not a whole lot of dual SIM phones can do. The user has the option to set mobile data traffic to be handled by one of the SIM cards while the other will be responsible for the voice calls and the text messages. The Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 comes with a 1.4 GHz dual-core processor and 1.5 GB of RAM. The interface of the device is fluid and responsive most of the time, but slowdowns and drop frames are way too common. For example, returning back to the home screen from an open application often forces the widgets to reload, which results in even further lagging. Overall, the smartphone's performance won't make you want to throw it against the wall, but we were expecting more in terms of responsiveness. As for its gaming capabilities, casual titles work perfectly. Those more demanding games with 3D graphics and all that eye candy are also playable, but can be choppy at times. Surfing the web on a large display like this is a joy, but the whole experience is a bit spoiled by the display's low resolution. That isn't as bad as it sounds, but just don't expect being able to read entire web pages without zooming in. The performance of the browser is pretty much flawless with some rare occasional slowdowns when rendering very heavy web pages. In addition to all the basic features, such as support for embedded YouTube videos and support for multiple tabs, there's this really neat feature that will clear the entire web pages out of all non-essential content, which makes it a lot more comfortable to read. Here we are at the camera user interface, which is very clean, very simple and very straightforward to use. However, we wouldn't really call it uh, rich in terms of features. While it does have some built-in filters and a number of shooting modes, it's missing some essentials like, for example, night mode and there is no HDR mode either. The data and photos that are taken with the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 are sharp and very detailed with colors that are pleasant to the eye, but not overly saturated at the same time. We did notice, however, that the snapper has a hard time capturing accurately bright shades of red, but overall the performance of the camera is above the average. Videos that are captured in daylight at 1080p resolution look very detailed and run smoothly at 30 frames per second. Naturally, indoor photos and videos are less detailed and have more noise, but overall we are very content with the way they look. The stock music player that has been provided with the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 gets the job done and you probably won't need to search for a substitute. It comes with a home screen widget, controls on the lock screen and a number of equalizer presets and effects. Watching videos on the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 is a pleasant experience when you have this huge display, despite its relatively low resolution. The stock video player can handle 1080p videos in many file formats, with the exception of DVX. Just like other Samsung smartphones, the Mega 5.8 supports the pop-up play feature, which works like this. Basically, it lets you have a window playing in a window of its own, hovering above the user interface of the phone, meaning that you can do something in the background while still keeping an eye on the video playing. The earpiece on the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 sounds slightly muffled during phone calls, but it's loud enough for us to understand the other party without much effort. The microphone captures clear and distinct audio and even though there is no secondary microphone for noise cancellation present on the device, our voice is still recognizable on the other side of the line, even in noisy environments. The Galaxy Mega 5.8 comes with a 2600 mAh battery, which is removable and it should last throughout at least a day of regular usage. Based on our experience with it, the screen is what draws the most power, so keeping its brightness low will help you get more battery life. In conclusion, we wouldn't really call the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 ridiculous just because of its gargantuan proportions. It's just not a smartphone for the mainstream market. Rather, it's a device meant for those who value having a large display above all. A giant screen like this makes gaming a lot more comfortable and it's great for watching photos or videos. Overall, the Galaxy Mega 5.8 is meant to be used as a multimedia device and as a phone second. However, don't forget that bigger isn't always better. Owning a Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8 does come with a number of trade-offs and one of them being that it's simply difficult to carry around for obvious reasons. We're also a bit disappointed by the occasional performance issues and the low resolution of the screen is another thing that we have a hard time getting over. If a large screen is what you need, perhaps checking out the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 
would be a better option. Yes, it comes at a slightly steeper price, but in return, you will get a much better user experience. Thank you for watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Mega 5.8. To learn more about the smartphone and all the top devices right now, check out our website phonearena.com.